Here's today's In Touch devotion. Today's scripture reading begins in verse 17 of Ephesians chapter 4. So I say this and affirm in the Lord that you are to no longer walk just as the Gentiles also walk, in the futility of their minds, being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves up to indecent behavior for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. But you did not learn Christ in this way, if indeed you have heard Him and have been taught in Him, just as truth is in Jesus, that in reference to your former way of life, you are to rid yourselves of the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit, and that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Therefore, ridding yourselves of falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor, because we are parts of one another. Be angry, and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not give the devil an opportunity. The one who steals must no longer steal, but rather he must labor, producing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with the one who has need. Let no unwholesome word come out of your mouth, but if there's any good word for edification, according to the need of the moment, say that, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and slander must be removed from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another compassionate, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. The Apostle Paul wrote extensively about the character and conduct of believers. He urged Christians to live in a manner worthy of their calling and to be imitators of God. His letters to the churches all include an explanation of what it means for those of us who are believers to live a godly life. One important goal is to eliminate sinful habits and behaviors and instead take on those that are acceptable to God. The acts of the flesh are no longer to be a part of us. We now have a new nature and should conduct ourselves accordingly. So let's look again at the Galatians 5 passages that we referenced in the September 13th devotion. In verses 19 through 21, Paul lists specific behaviors that have to cease and among them are those fueled by anger, hostilities, strife, outbursts of anger, and dissensions. These ungodly attitudes and actions are to be replaced by the fruit of the Spirit. If we're full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, we won't be hot-tempered. Instead of speaking rashly, we'll interact with others with the wisdom of Christ. We all struggle with some form of ungodly behavior, but we don't have to continue in it. Change is possible because Christ has broken sin's power over us, and His Spirit works continually to transform us. <laughs> 